So what I really want to do is I want to make the case for simulation. But solving the simulation problem is difficult. And the reason it's difficult is because it bumps up against reality. Systems change. Technology gets in the way. Requirements change. Priorities change. So I think it's really important that we find a way to convince our customers and our partners that we can help them get accurate to what they want to see. But there are fundamental problems we have to solve in order to do that. I couldn't find anything that solved the problem in the way that I wanted it solved, so I ended up building that. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Here's a quote from an actual architect I work with. Max, I like you, but BPMN lies. You guys paint a rosy picture, but if delivery's not rosy, it gets blamed on me. So we're natural enemies. What I took away from this is that I need to be a part of the IT solution, and that I need to show them how we add value. So I had a moment of clarity. Visual simulations enhance accuracy. Non-integrated tools confuse the solution. Value is lost when energy changes state. That means that when people are jumping from Excel to Visio and back again to the diagram and so on, they lose you. So we need to encourage a bridge language between the business and IT so we can show each other what we've got. Who gets that reference, by the way? And we need to invite everybody to the transformation party. Anybody? Ivan? Yeah. So the reality is that we need to know all the cost of a project. We need to know the cost of processing alone just as much as we need to know the cost of maintaining the servers that make it possible. Even if that's not an explicit requirement, it's still a requirement. So how do we guide customers to the light? I suggest that we provide guided wizards in our processes that drive users to, towards measuring KPIs, which can then be simulated. And I, generate, and I posit that we generate working process wireframes, not just process maps. I think it should be super easy to do that. So we need sexy and easy ways to measure and simulate. And in my opinion, Excel is the enemy. It is the wrong way to do it. So I think we need to support visual and media simulations, optimizations, and testing cycles. And speaking of sexy, I love this quote from Jim. Processes define themselves. I think we need to listen to what they say. So in that, in that world, I think there has to be an entire conversation across the totality of the stack. So those self-defining processes need context. I think 3D modeling gives us that context. And that's what our tool does. Some of the best of us actually do 3D modeling. We just do it manually or with closed systems. We used to do the Lombardi all the time. We had this layer cake that we would make in PowerPoint. I think process and rules are different legs of the same animal. When one leg gets long enough, the other one has to, be, has to adjust to keep up with it. And I think we need to encompass that in our modeling mechanisms. So I, I, I support DCO and other methodologies that do that. I think we need to embrace the entire journey of transformation. So I think it's a contact sport and it's a team sport, and I think the journey starts with modeling. But it goes through IT, through development, and through everyday delivery. I believe that even project management should be part of your process, uh, process improvement. So I think that testing the transformation simulations unify us. And what I mean by that is that you should always be able to go back and go, what happens if I pluchinko this machine from this point? One thing that I think is important is that even though a lot of what we do helps technical architects, and I am a technical architect, we don't see them at conferences like this. So there's some kind of a gap somewhere where they don't think that what we do adds value. And I think that's a bridge we've got to cross. So in order to win the transformation journey, I think it's e important to easily align the simulated and the tested, right? I think changes to goals and KPIs of the tech stack are good if they're conscious decisions. We can compromise. We can say, you know what? It's just not fast enough to do this. That data is hard to reach. But we should make a conscious decision. I think testing without simulation is voodoo. I don't think that you can have a hypothesis that's tested if you don't have a hypothesis. I think process testing should be automated. We have a tool, an algorithm, that we're actually making available to everyone that goes through, automatically um, examines processes and because they are deterministic by nature. And I think we should be automatically testing the hell out of our processes. Incidentally, and for the same reasons, we need to explicitly make room for experience mapping. Our tool, when you have a swim lane, you can actually bring up a, uh, an empathy map. So you can start profiling your customers and measuring their happiness. And finally, I want to get into the demonstration. And this is going to be a doozy, because I've got a lot to show you. So bear with me. Something's probably going to go wrong. So the first thing I want to point out is that our tool is cloud-based and mobile. You can bring it up on your phone and actually start using it. Not you, because we're not releasing it right yet. But we see that as being part of it. And we see this as sort of being a replacement for uh, Visio. 
right? So we see Lucid Charts and Visio, and we think those are great tools, but we think they miss a process context. We think it's very disconnected and static, and we think there's a place in there for people to start modeling things in a better way. So the tool itself uh, integrates with BPMN. But what it allows you to do is actually import processes from BlueWorks Live from any other BPMN tool. And some of this is baked in. Um, our next generation of improvements is actually going to bake it in from the other BPM vendors, uh, obviously starting with the open source ones because they're easy to play with. So let me show you what I mean by that. So you can go into BlueWorks Live. You can choose a process. It'll actually import the BPMN. And uh, hopefully that doesn't screw up. Good. And it'll actually import the process. Now, when it imports the process, it's not just a dumb import of BPMN. It actually knows that it's talking to uh, BlueWorks Live. So it actually goes out and makes all the RESTful calls, pulls in the documentation, all the other stuff that's captured in there. Um, it allows us to do playbacks. So what I can do here is I can actually go create a use case. I can say we start over here, and then we go over here, and then we go over here, and we hit this decision point, and then you know this happens. So I'll call this my happy path, and I'll make it green. And I'll play it back. So I can start talking to my customers and highlighting the use cases as they flow. And much more importantly than this, I can actually do this in Tron mode. <laughs> so you get the light cycle. I can, let me see if I can remember how to do this. I can play use cases simultaneously. So I can show you how you go through a happy case and a sad case all at the same time. I can transform this into a three-dimensional model. I think this is really key, and I think it's an important way to communicate the information. One of the things that I believe very strongly is that we have to get different layers of people involved. So the vision that I have is that once we have the process model done, we take that very same artifact and we share it with the uh, enterprise architects. And they do the modeling they otherwise would have done in Visio in this tool. And then once they're done with that, we hand it off to the application architects. And then we hand it off to all the other people. So this becomes the layer cake, layer cake, layer cake where you tell the entire story of your application. And you can start articulating all the different ways that these things play together. And I think it's important because I think it builds consensus. When someone is saying north and someone else really believes you should go south, it doesn't work. I've been married for 26 years. I know these things. Uh, let's see. A couple of other things that the tool does is that it allows you to define inputs and outputs. So you can actually come in here and create complex entities. So in this case, I've defined a loan. And the loan can have subtypes, and they can be subtypes within the subtypes and so on. The reason that's important to me is because the tool actually can generate um, POJO objects based on this context and deploy these out, for example, to Drools or to ODM so that they can define the interface between this system and, and the other systems that you want to you wanna work with. It can also be used for um, estimation. So one of the things that we do with the tool that I think is kind of unique is that we provide a way for you to do simulations based upon the details of the entity that you're describing. So, what I don't want is I don't want my users going to Excel. So the way that I address that problem is that I allow them the luxury 
of using the KPIs and whatnot, or even the variables that I've defined, to create a formula that takes into account the number of trials that I'm simulating, the cost of those trials, the cost of the step, the probability of hitting this mark, all of that. And I allow that to be visualized. So my goal is to provide a context by which people can agree that the reason we're doing this is because it adds that much value. So coming over here, oh, not ready for that one yet. I can come into my simulations tab and say, you know, I care about my happy path and my exception path, and I care about wait time and execution time and, I don't know, waiting activities, what have you. And it'll actually go through, and based upon the probabilities that I've assigned to my gateways, the costs that I've assigned to my swim lanes, it'll actually help me understand what it is that I'm getting out of doing this. So if I run 100 trials within a two-week period, for example. So the idea is that we can start saying, look, We've only got $300,000 for this project. And clearly, this is the stuff that has the most value. Let's stub out all the other ones and mill this one first. At the very least, I want to be able to have the vocabulary to have that conversation. How many of you guys have read 1984, the book? Regardless of the politics, the major conceit of that book is that if you control people's vocabulary, you can control the way that they think. What I want to do is I want to give my customers the capacity to have the vocabulary to describe their problems and describe their solutions for themselves. In order to do that, they need to see the value of what it is that we're doing together. And I think the visualization is a key metaphor for doing that. I also believe that we have a responsibility throughout the life cycle of the project. So one of the things that we do in the tool is that we actually integrate with um, project management tools. So you can integrate with Jira or Linkit. And you can actually come in here. And for each one of your activities, you can actually link them to Jira tickets. So the idea is that you can actually come in from a project management perspective or from a leadership perspective, and you want to know how done your project is. It's this done. So you can come here, you can click on this, and click on that, and it'll actually bring up the JIRA ticket. So the goal that I have in mind is that we provide an integrated experience for people so that they're able to see this thing that they are invested in and they've been arguing for and they've gone to board meetings for and gotten budget for. They can actually see the birth happen, right? They can actually see it becoming devolved, and I think it's important. I think they're invested, and I'm invested, and I want to see the whole thing happen. Um, let's see. The tool does documentation. So one of the things that you can do with it is that it, we actually have a, sort of a standard, um, uh, I think some academic standard one of the, one of the guys implemented, um, of how documentation should be generated. So it actually takes a snapshot of the entire, um, of the entire application and it actually builds project documentation for you, which can then be downloaded and shared. So the goal of this is to provide, again, a mechanism where the tool becomes a central repository for what it is we're trying to build. And I want to be very clear about something. This is not a BPM tool. This integrates with other BPM tools. So I'll show you in just a moment um, how it integrates with IBM BPM, because that's, that's the technology that I have the most expertise with. But we have a mediation layer that has a grammar. And that grammar talks to back-end databases, or back-end BPM servers. So the idea is that you can use this tool to pull in or export out processes that have been defined in this way, push them to your BPM server of choice, which I think is very empowering for customers. Because now you can start having conversations around takeout, for example. How do I move from this engine to that engine? So let me show you an example. Let me see, documentation, inputs, outputs. I think I mentioned those. So again, uh, you can come in and you can define the inputs and the outputs of your process. The other thing the tool does that I'm, I'm pretty happy with is that, so this one, I'll tell you right now, is going to take a long time to load. 
Um, the reason it's going to take a long time to load is because it has 29 different layers of process and some 120 activities. This is this guy right here. This is actually a, a, a project uh, for, for one of our customers. Don't worry, it's been scrubbed. So what this is actually going to show you is actually the entirety, the complexity of the entire project. So one of the things that I'll show you in just a minute is how much time do I have? Five minutes. OK. So one of the things I'll show you in just a minute is that we can actually take this entire process with all the screens that you see here and build it and deploy it. So, and that's that just a thing I put in because all those red lines drive me nuts. Um, so I can actually come in and just to kind of show there's nothing off my sleeve here, I'm going to log into my, so those of you guys who are IBM BPMers will know what I'm showing you here. These are all the applications. So I'm actually, what I'm going to do now, oh, that's a little bit of a preview, is I'm actually going to come to my robot. What should we call this project? Can you spell that for me? Did I spell that right? OK. And what's your phone number? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right. 911 and, I don't know, 101 Main Street. So. I'm going to put this in. Notice the name of the project is underscore boo. I'm going to point it to my server, pass in the credentials of someone who's authorized to do this. Hopefully, I haven't misspelled anything. So what it's doing right now is that it's using the public APIs of the IBM BPM engine to go out and export this process to IBM BPM. And then it's going through systematically examining all of its inputs and going through and it's going to build uh, bootstrap-based attractive screens based on the input and the output type of all the widgets that I had defined as being the entity for the input and the output of the activities. I hope I've actually defined inputs and outputs on this. Um, one of the nice things about it is that you can actually define it at the first step and just propagate that all the way through. Um, and then when it actually sees that, what it's going to do is that it's going to go build a form. It's going to count the number of elements on the form so the form itself is balanced and doesn't look super ugly. Um, and, and then it's going to build labels for the form based upon the naming convention and the type. So for example, it'll know that if something is a date, it gets a calendar widget. If something's a boolean, you get the checkbox. And the idea is that you can go and systematically provide this mechanism where people are able to immediately deploy the wireframe of the process. You can give it to your users and have them start using it. And someone says, step number three, oh, you know, I don't need an approval button here, right? I'm not ready to approve yet. And that in itself acts as a mechanism of requirement gathering. So this spins for a while, but let me come. Oh, there's Boo right there. So there's the process. It's been imported into IBM BPM. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to do a refresh. So based upon the entity that we just did, it's actually going, to, it's going out and it's actually building all of those processes, all of the decisions, all of the timers. It's linking them all together, and it's actually built the UI. And hopefully, it won't embarrass me in a minute, and it'll actually render that UI. Let me see here. I don't know if it's going to do that for me. These are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> um, so let's see. 
So it, um, while I bring up the, the VM to actually go look at this, So it's actually built all of these UIs. And if I come over here, so here's the process that was just imported. I think over here you can actually see the timestamp. Well, you could see it if my browser wasn't all screwy. And you can come here, run it. It actually challenges me for my credentials. It's actually built this UI for me, which is mobile and ready to go. So if I come here and I say, my name is Bob, well, oh, notice the spaghetti name and the address and all that stuff, it actually built that into the thing. And it created it for all of those forms. So if I, I don't know, I'm Bob, and I come here and I start putting nonsense for the interest, you notice it doesn't do that, because it's actually smart enough to know that interest is a decimal. So it won't let me type in nonsense into it. I have to put in numbers. It created a date for this. And it actually created a calendar widget with a timer for this. So I move that along. Cause a refresh. And you can actually see that the next step in the process has that same information. So it's actually progressing the process instance. So again, what I'm really trying to do here is not solve a technical problem. I'm trying to solve a cultural problem. And the cultural problem is, how do I get my customers engaged with this thing that I'm building for them? And I think the immediacy and the visualization are keys to being able to do that. I want to give this to them so they can start playing with it and go, no, that's wrong. Actually, we don't do this. We do this other thing. And then it goes that way. And I want to say thank you. I appreciate that feedback. We're now looking at the same thing, and we're solving the same problem. Any questions? Please. Uh, you ran some simulations, and there were some numbers up there. Can you capture those numbers and do a delta Absolutely. between one version versus another? Absolutely, we can. Okay. Um, and that, those simulations actually come out in the documentation as well. So when you generate the documentation, if you've got simulations, you can trigger to say, I want these to, to be part of the documentation. So you can actually pass that on. Yeah, I was looking for finding a better way to make changes. Yeah, um, we have that in our plan. Uh, the other thing that we have in our plan, and no one's going to believe me. I'll, maybe I'll demo this next year if, if Bruce is kind enough to have me back. We're actually building a VR thing. I want you to be able to step into the process and see all the threats shooting around you. Yes, please. No. Oh, awesome. One of my failings as a BPMer is that I'm actually kind of faking it in here. I'm I'm more on I'm a technical person by nature and by training. They just let me wander in off the street, and and so a lot of what I do is really brute strength, right? I just want this done this way, and I couldn't convince anyone to do it, so I wanted to do it. No, it's round tripping. So I can actually go into the tool, just like I can pull in from, um, just like I can pull in from B IBM BPM or from uh, BlueWorks. I can also pull in, um, I can pull in from other engines as well. So. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so you can actually come in and import from multiple different things. So including IBM BPM. So you can actually hit your server. I spell that right. And you can see all the processes that are available to you. 
and you can pull them in. Now, sometimes when you pull it in, it's actually kind of ugly because um, you know, BPM and standard doesn't tell you how two lines connect, right? We have an algorithm for that. So um, I, uh, before I got into computers, I, had a, I was a PhD track in mathematics, and that actually became helpful because I used that mechanism to, uh, to do this piece, uh, which was to try to map out an algorithm to, to, to make this not quite so ugly. Um, how much time do I have? Am I over? Uh, you're over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we it up. I didn't show you is that we actually have another mechanism that actually automates an RPA, not, not an RPA, but an automated way that actually brings up the screens, allows you to capture information that you put into them, and takes on the role of who you said in order to test all of that. So we have an automated testing tool around processes that, again, is agnostic because it interacts with the IBM BPM tool through an API intermediary. It looks like this but you can actually build out your tests so you can actually see them execute. Oh. And in the process of doing that, let me just bring up one of these guys. I don't know if I've got an interactive UI on this guy or not. But it actually brings up the form. It populates it with whatever you put into that form from a previous time. Now, in this case, I didn't put anything in, so it's not going to remember. And it actually will submit that. So it would have, if I had captured the click event, it would have actually clicked this for me. And it does it based on the credibility and, and the, the identity of whoever I say at that time. So this is where the whole simulation and the testing becomes very visceral. You can do this quite literally in a half an hour. Build a dumb process, deploy it, test it, get some feedback on it, and use that as a mechanism to come back and solicit feedback on what to do next. I believe that the art of BPM requires that we get dirt under our fingernails. I think we have to be close to people. And I think that this is a way to do that. I'm not saying it's the best way. It's just the one that I wanted. Thank you. Thank you, Max.